Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ghost Story Time with Rob. What you're about to hear is a true ghost story, and one I know will send shivers down your spine. This is called The B Blunder of the Body Snatchers. The last days of May 1879 comprised probably the most difficult time of John's life. On the 20th, his friend Augustus Devon died of tuberculosis, consumption as it was called. On the 25th, just five days later, his 73-year-old father also passed away. Daddy was to be buried on the 20th. So there was John, standing quietly in his little cemetery in North Bend, Ohio. His father's burial service was just concluding. The whole family was there, and then John's brother, Ben, approached him. Ben took, his, took John's arm and said, Come with me. The two brothers walked toward a nearby grave. Ben pointed to the other grave and said to John, Look! Look what's happened! It was the grave of John's friend, Augustus Devon. Nine days dead, and the grave had been robbed. Augustus was gone. In Ohio in 1870s, grave robbery was perhaps the most common crime, and ghouls were supplying medical schools with cadavers for dissection. So fresh graves were always a prime target. Brother Ben told John, we're going to see to it that this does not happen to Daddy. Daddy's casket would be sealed in bricks and cement. The earth above would be filled with heavy stones. They would hire a watchman to check the grave every hour on the hour, every night for at least one week. They would do everything within their power to prevent those monsters from stealing daddy. The precautions were taken, and then John, started thinking about his friend, Augustus, and his heart ached if he, John, had to turn every medical school in the state upside down, he would recover the body of his friend and return it to its rightful resting place. Next day, May 30th, John traveled to nearby Cincinnati, obtained search warrants, and began searching. His first stop, the Ohio Medical College. Administrative officials stalling suggested that John's friend may have been taken to another school in town. They had received no cadavers, they said. John persisted and was finally admitted. With the grudging cooperation of professors, he was shown classrooms and storerooms and laboratories the body of his friend was nowhere to be found. But then, just as John was preparing to leave this college and search elsewhere, he saw in the back of one room a rope hanging taut from a windlass and leading down through the trap door in the floor. John walked toward the rope. Someone shouted, no, wait! John pulled the robe slowly and with all his might, and from the dark chamber beneath the floor arose a human corpse, suspended by a noose around its neck. There was a cloth over the corpse's face. John, with trembling hand, removed the makeshift veil to reveal 
not the face of his friend, Augustus, but the face of his own father. No one knows precisely how the grave robbers robbed the grave of John's daddy, how they eluded the watchman or penetrated the vault, or for that matter, how they dispatched him so quickly to the Ohio Medical College. Of course, in that era of rampant cadaver trafficking, the grave robbers got plenty of practice. Then in 1881, the Ohio General Assembly passed a law which put the ghouls out of business. A law permitting medical students to use unclaimed corpses for instructive dissection. It was public outcry over one incident more than any other which hastened that legislation, the widespread outrage over what had happened to the daddy of John and Ben, the senior John Scott Harrison. For whether the body snatchers knew it or not, the body that they pulled from that plot belonged to the only man history remembers as the son of one U.S. president and the father of another. And now you know the rest of the story. So until tomorrow, be safe.